Hey friends, Kevin here, and in my never-ending quest to take you to some odd places, and places I find when I'm out traveling and adventuring, here's one of them. It's the site where Daniel Boone's son was killed, murdered, massacred. Not necessarily a happy story, but it is a part of history. So let me give you a little background on this. Okay, we have to go back in time to 1773 in southwest Virginia. This is the area down next to Kentucky, the very tip of the state. As a matter of fact, this is Lee County. If you look at Virginia, this is the first county at the very tip end of the state. Now, this was on a trek from, I believe, North Carolina, headed through to Kentucky to get to that Cumberland Gap area where everything opens up. This was the adventuring this was the trip where Daniel Boone's son, James, along with some others, were massacred by Indians. You have an area that runs through here called the Powell River. This was the first Indian massacre in this area. This area was not very well settled at this time. So not only was, unfortunately, Daniel Boone's son killed, he was also tortured pretty badly. He'd been shot in both hits fingernails and toenails removed, more than likely the natives to the area were certainly trying to send a message. And one of these people knew him, knew who he was, knew who his father was. They had had fine relations before, and this particular person on the Indian side chose not to step in to intervene to save James Boone from a very, very bad day. Now, one of the slaves, Adam, whether he was able to get away or whether he was let go, and that is certainly what I believe because they wanted a witness. They wanted someone to go and let everyone else know exactly what had happened and why it had happened and how brutal and vicious it had been. It took him 11 days of wandering around to get back and actually find the rest of the group. And the Indians got the result that they wanted. This put an end to this trek of going and trying to make it to Kentucky to do this settlement that they had intended on doing, although they did regroup and do this later. But the Indians, at least temporarily, got what they wanted. You know, some folks that are older can remember these television series, you know, the Daniel Boone thing from the 50s and early 60s, or, you know, we called it somehow growing up on reruns. But the things portrayed in that, they're, they're, they're usually nice, happy stories and what television was at the time, and the good guy always wins. And the reality is it wasn't that way. Trying to settle these types of areas, it was brutal. Then 1773, this country was still under British control. It was a different world. A lot of the Indian groups were trying to figure out who they were even going to side with. Many of them were had deals and were siding with the British, and they were willing to do almost anything to protect parts of their lands and keep people out, and this was one of those parts. Parts that is now this end of Kentucky, parts that are now Virginia headed up to what is West Virginia now. There were many, many instances of brutality, but this was one of the ones and one of the most famous ones. Now, as you're aware, most people had large families back then, Daniel and Sarah Boone, they had 10 children. At the time that James was killed, he was 16 years old. But in that era, at 16 years old, you were certainly a man. If you choose to do any further research or to come to this area, what you're going to find on maps is going to be this little community called Stickleyville. And you're going to find references to Wallens Ridge, which is part of that community basically. There isn't an exact marked site. Again, this was 1773, but there is someone that owns this land 
and people that have owned this land over the years that have a good guess of what is marked there that is the grave site of James Boone and a couple of others that were in that group. But the fact is that no one is 100% certain. You had things that were marked with rocks, things that were marked with wood. Even if you had someone take the time for wood carvings, those things don't last but a few decades. Wind, storms, weather, rain, they deteriorate. Things get moved around, even rocks, people come in, different people end up with land. They're farming it, they're building houses, so things that were rocks and piles of rocks get moved around, used for other things. This is one, like many things, that no one truly will probably ever know the exact, exact location, but we have it pretty close in knowing the area that this took place and where he was indeed buried. Let me know down in the comments below any questions you have, anything that you know detail-wise about Daniel Boone and James Boone and this expedition that did not go well a year before the next expedition where they went on into Kentucky and, and the things that most of us do know from history after that, what became the Cumberland Gap and the opening up of that part of of this land and everything that came after it. And we'll see where we can end up next.